so cloudy. Okay. Oh, is everyone here or are we missing someone? Okay. Oh, are we missing him or is that somebody else's laptop? Okay. Okay. Well, uh, good afternoon, everyone. I am Vedant Khandalwal and I'm a third year PhD student here at uh, AAC. So how's lunch? How's everybody doing? Good? Sleepy? Well, if you are sleepy, I've got some puzzles for you already. So today I'll be talking about uh, artificial intelligence and gaming, how it has evolved over the time. So have, uh, how many of you have already heard of AI in gaming and something? What have you heard? Any one of you, yeah, please. Uh, there's, there's like computer version of a lot of like, UPC. Okay, mm -hmm. All right. Uh, anyone else? Please. Sorry. Right. Okay. Uh, you. Anybody else wants to add something on that? Please. Sorry. Right, right. So good answers. Now, anyone has any idea when was the first AI in gaming uh, game was introduced? Sorry? Oh, means year? Yeah, it's pretty close. So the first game was uh, in 1950 and it wasn't Pong. So AI in gaming has been going on for more than seven decades now. So what are the contents? So today we'll be just going over the history of AI in games, AI in puzzle games. Then we'll have some puzzles for all of you to beat the AI that we have. Hopefully the link works in your systems and uh, future of AI in game. So this is the earliest game, uh, earliest uh, game which had AI in it. That is NIM. So essentially, what does this game do? If you see here uh, on the right hand side, what we have here is a, a series of uh, match text. Now the game says that in every turn, a player can remove as many sticks, as many match sticks as they want. <laughs> okay, and the player who removes the last match stick wins. Pretty simple. Any questions on game rules? Pretty simple, right? So this was the first game that had uh, AI in it. And uh, now can all of you quickly try to go to this particular link and uh, let's see who can beat all the four levels. So this is very old. This was done in 1950 and it was one of the most basic uh, usage of AI that we can see. Yeah, please. Why don't you cheat? I, I did not. Uh, don't say like the game. Mm -hmm. The cheats. Ah uh, no. Are these? Uh, is this link working on your system? Working. Okay. Perfect. So all you need to do is take your time, and all we want to do is we want to reach the level four. Okay. If you are able to solve level four. And then uh, just let me know or raise your hand or speak up. 
Hmm. Let me give it a try. If anyone has any doubts in the question or link is not working, please just ask away. Janine, give it a try. I think someone cleared level one. It's pretty simple strategy over that time as you play a couple of times, you'll understand what strategy the computer follows. So I think if you get the strategy, it's pretty easy to uh, get the level three. We'll give it a uh, few more minutes. Anyone done with level one, level two? You can take out as many uh, steps you want, but only from one row and one time. Keep that in mind. We'll give it one more minute and then we'll stop. Thank you. 
Okay, we'll stop now. So anyone who reached level four, let's say it's not the we we did not reach level four. That's fine. But did we reach level four? Anyone? How many of you? Okay, perfect. Any one of you quickly can you know just get up and tell the strategy that you follow. Any one of you. There are five of you who reach. Go ahead. Uh, both the same. But that would not work in level two. Okay. Well, uh, so we have five people, and I've got a little small gift for you guys. All right. So let's see. This was the first puzzle. We'll have uh, many more uh, to come. Okay. So now you all played against the computer, the AI that is behind this. But what is that AI? So it's the most simple and basic AI that we have in this system. It's rule based system. So what does we mean by rule based system? All these rules that you just now figured out yourself, these strategies they are already pre-programmed in the system. Now, when the system already knows what is the best way, which you figured out after playing a couple of times, it's just going to uh, identify the best solution given the state, given how many sticks are left in each row, and it's going to play with that. So that's what rule-based system is called. They don't adapt, they don't improve, or not, nothing. No, no sort of improvement is, is done in these systems. The only... Uh, way they play is based on the rules which are pre-programmed in that. Now, another in mid 1950s, another game that was, uh, that had an AI solver was uh, Checkers. So this was uh, developed by a name, uh, a man named Arthur Samuel, which created a system that could play Checkers. And this was done at IBM. Now, what was the algorithm behind that AI play? So it's called min-max algorithm. Just a, a small uh, brief understanding of what min-max algorithm is. So at every step of the game, you identify all the, all the possible moves that you can make. And for all those possible moves, you try to identify or the uh, system identifies what is the maximum loss that you can go for. So let's say there are five moves, but out of those five moves, three of the moves will uh, lead um, me into defeat. So those have maximum losses. So what uh, this what does min max algorithm says that every step of the game that you play, you want to minimize the loss that you uh, minimize the maximum loss that you can. So again, in those five possible moves, if three of them will uh, lead me to defeat, then I'm gonna not choose them. I'm gonna choose the minimum maxim maximum loss. So that's the rough. Uh, overall idea behind this min-max algorithm. Now, after 1950, we had 1970s, the arcade era, and one of uh, uh, the person just mentioned Pong. So Pong was there, which was in 1972. And then we had uh, Space Invaders, 1978. Again, Space Invaders was quite similar to what NIM had. It, it was a rule-based AI, which uh, follows simple rule, move left, move right, across, and throw bombs. The only way the difficulty increases is by the free, uh, is by increasing the frequency of bomb and speed of uh, the way this alien ships come down. The another one was for Pong. It was reactive AI. What do you mean by reactive AI? It moves based on the current position of the Pong ball. So if the Pong ball is coming to the right, the bat will bat is going to move to the right. If the Pong ball is coming a little up, it's going to move a little up. So it moves based on the position of where the uh, pong ball is coming. So that was 1970s. Then in 1980, we had Pac-Man. So in Pac-Man uses behavioral AI. So what do we mean by that? That means that it guides the actions based on the position and different behaviors or all these different characters. So how many characters do we have in Pac-Man? Total five, Pac-Man itself, 
Then we have the red ghost, we have the cyan ghost, we have pink ghost, and we have orange ghost. So if you see here, the red ghost, the target of red ghost or how it's uh, been designed, it always targets and follow Pac-Man. For the pink ghost, it targets four tiles ahead of Pac-Man. So that if Pac-Man uh, goes on eating the dots, it might come and hit it and it dies. Then the cyan one is a little unpredictable. It moves based on the movements of red, uh, based on the position of where uh, red ghost is. It also takes into consideration the position of Pac-Man and the direction in which it's going. And then for orange one, it's uh, it changes its behavior randomly between chasing Pac-Man and running away from it. So you see, why again, why is it called behavioral AI? Because it uh, the next step or the way they behave depends on the behavior of the other uh, components which is present in this particular game, where in this case, it's Pac-Man, Red Ghost, and uh, other ghosts. After 1980, we had uh, machine learning era, which was in 2000. So in this particular era, uh, we had a game in which player controls a creature and goes visits different islands. So the whole, the core idea of this game was to train a creature and make him do different sorts of tasks, like make him bring some water for him or uh, take care of itself and so on and on. Now, for this particular, uh, this particular game, the AI that was behind in the back end of this game were two things. One was reinforcement learning. What is reinforcement learning? So let's say if the player praised the creature for eating green when it's hungry, then what does it do? The creature understands and learn that, oh, okay, if I'm eating grain when I'm hungry, that's a good thing. Let's say if uh, when the creature is hungry, it's directly trying to uh, eat the player itself. So, of course, that's not a good thing. So it will punish it. So now creature knows, oh, okay, I don't have to eat uh, my master. Now, so that's the core idea of reinforcement learning, which it uses. It also uses decision tree. What is decision tree? It's like a flow chart. If this then that, if not, then this. This is the whole core idea and structure of decision tree. So again, uh, let's say uh, in this particular case, I'll go with the same example. If the creature gets hungry, then he eats green. Now, how does he know? How, does, how did it build the decision tree structure? Based on these uh, rewards and punishment given by the player. So this is how it trains and is able to do different tasks. So that was the era of 2000s when this was the kind of AI that was infused in different games. And uh, now means we have seen a couple of uh, different games over the time, how they have evolved in the AI between them. Now let's do another one. I would like you guys to go on this particular link and everybody's familiar with tic-tac-toe. I'm guessing we don't have to discuss the rules. Hmm? Oh, the, the exact one? Okay. Well, let's try playing this AI solver and let's see if uh, either of us can read it. And let me know if this link doesn't work. Is link working? Hmm? Doesn't work in yours? I'm just gonna, let me do one quick thing. Okay, so there are some backup links. Go ahead and see if either of these links work.
last one both okay whichever link works for you that's perfectly fine Anybody got any luck when? Uh, hold on. Oh. Pretty simple, right? You have that, put it in the center or put it in the corner. We start from there too. Right? Uh, anyone? I'll give it uh, two more minutes. Randy, give it a try. See if you beat the yesterday. I did not. Okay. What about puzzle one minutes? Any luck? No? Did anyone lose to AI or it was all draw? Hmm? Hmm. Okay. Hmm. Okay, we'll give it 20 more seconds and then let's see if anyone made it. Well, I think the time's up. So anyone, anyone made it to waiting the AI? No, anyone, anyone, anyone. No. Okay. Well, no worries. Let's we have one more task left in this presentation. So let's hope we get another winner there. Now we have seen from 1950s, 1970s, 1980s to 2000s. And now let's move forward from 2000. What was there? And till now, whatever we discussed, any questions? Do you want me to go back to a slide, explain something? Anyone? No? Perfect. So now moving on to 2010s. But till 2010 or till 2000s, do you guys think, are we missing something? Is there something that was more important with respect to AI in gaming that I haven't discussed till now? Anyone? Yeah, I mean, I'm saying... We, so we discussed till 2000. Is there something till 2000 or 2010 that was significant uh, with respect to AI in gaming and I haven't discussed? <laughs> not exactly. I'm not going into uh, the gaming. The details of what the graphics were improved or how they were improved. That would be a whole another presentation in itself. Anyone? So, yes, we did miss something. We made an important era where uh, we saw the dawn of AI dominance in gaming. So, what was it? First one, Chinook. In 1994, Chinook was the AI system that was the perfect checkers player. And it beat 
1994 the grandmaster or not the grandmaster the world champion of checkers at that time next deep blue by ibm so a lot of you must have heard this particular thing that deep blue beat the fits gary kasparov in chess match so if you don't know the deep blue got defeated by the grandmaster in 1996 which was the first match it was only in 1997 which was the second match uh, means they were meeting for the second time when deep blue won against uh, gary so here it says that gary uh, kasparov resigns after 19 moves in their last game and deep blue was uh, announced as winner third alpha go by google mind so it was able to defeat the go champion so this was in 2016 or little after two sorry about like yeah. beat the ai yeah. no i think there is another ai on top of that which is able to beat it uh, even faster Th- they might have found it but ai comes back harder <laughs> So yeah, so AlphaGo. This was in two thousand sixteen, by the way, when AlphaGo defeats uh, the world champion Go player uh, KG. So now we have seen these different uh, AI uh, AI which have defeated this human champions and all these advancements. So this was the era since when AI started dominating in gaming. and the ai solvers let alone ai within in the back end of the game the ai solvers were able to defeat humans and before we go why why is this such an important era what is the importance of this i have one puzzle for you guys again now everyone knows connect four anyone who doesn't no right so let's see let's see if this link works otherwise we have two more backup links but hopefully this link should work let's see who's able to solve i'm going to give a good time for you guys because it takes time to finish each connect for game hmm? no no it's it's possible it's possible <laughs> it just says unbeatable it, it doesn't open okay uh, let me hold on hopefully one of these links should work okay i'll try if either of these uh, link works for you guys hopefully one of these should work are you sure the first one can work okay they have restrictions in their laptop link restrictions from second one works perfect who among all of you is like the gaming person is anyone who like does a lot of gaming strategy games no one you okay so let's see who builds the strategy the fastest uh chaturangi ranjit chinant give it a try Thank you. 
if you uh, either one of you open the very first line, then you need to click on the color to select the AI. Like which color does the AI click? I think in two or three games, you should find a simple strategy with which uh, you can start uh, well your game. One? Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. Well, great. Two out of three, huh? Nice. Come on, guys. So it's not beatable. At least that's uh, it's not unbeatable. That's been proved. One uh, small hint for everyone who is still trying. You always start, if you are moving first, you start with the center, uh, center most column. That's a trick. Anyone getting close? And you think you have won or you'll win the next round, AI takes it away, huh? We'll give it two more minutes. Any luck, Janine, Ranjit, Sitrangi? <laughs>
Okay. Another quick hint is once you put uh, one piece in the center block, put the next piece in an alternate block to that uh, center one. Now this is one of the best in winning startings for any connect four piece. So let's see. We've got two hints. Let's take uh, two more minutes and see if uh, we get more wins. Yeah, you won. We we got it. You can you can change it. You can start yourself first. So if someone opened the first link, then the red goes first. So choose the other color as AI. But yeah, the trick is you guys need to go first if you want to win. Okay, let's go for one last minute and then we'll move forward. Come on, you got uh, 60 more seconds. Go for it. Give it another time. This is cheating. Literally, whatever I do. I don't need Okay, we'll stop now. So we know there is one minute. Anybody else who won against the uh, A solver? No one? Anyone who came like super close, you had three in a row and then it all went away? How many of you guys? Oh, God, almost all of you, I guess. Most of you. Okay, so before we move forward, we go forward with. Oh, I, I forgot to all the do yeah, I mean, that's a smart way of doing it, right? Well, so now we done with Connect uh, 4. So now we saw different advancements over the time, different types of AI systems, algorithms, beating all these different games. But uh, I specifically mentioned the era, the important era where we call it the AI dominance. So why is it important? Why did chess, AlphaGo, and checkers 
was important. Like uh, their world champions getting beaten by AI was so important. Anyone, just like simply, if you, I talked about uh, uh, Nim as well. I talked about Pong as well. I talked about a couple of them, but those aren't the ones which are counted as like the most significant ones. Why is that? Anyone? Anyone? So, I I mentioned a couple of games, right, which had AI solver in it or uh, AI in the back end. But I specifically mentioned chess, checkers, and alpha go. Uh, sorry, go as the ones which were more significant in the history of AI gaming. Yes. Yeah. Because they outperform. Yeah, means there are uh, other games. Even tic tac toe. If you play against AI, AI outperforms you. It still outperforms people like that. How can the world see like the game of that? It's like this for seeing like like two songs. Yes, great answer. So it's important because of the complexity and the state space. Now, what do we? Before I go into what exactly that is, what is state space? State space is all the possible, uh, all the possible uh, states in which a particular game can be. Like in Connect Four, when you put uh, one single uh, piece in it, that was one state. When you put the second, uh, when computer puts one in it, that is another state, and so on. So that is what we mean by state. So when we say state space, we mean all these pos all these different uh, numerous number of possibilities that can be there for any games. So if we just quickly go over numbers, so for Go, the different number, uh, the different possibilities which are there is 10 to the power 360, which is a huge number. For chess, it's 10 to the power 120. And it is said that uh, 10 to the power 120 is a number much larger than the number of atoms in this observable universe. Then for checkers is 5 into 10 to the power 11. So these are all big numbers, big different sets of possibilities in which uh, possibilities which are present in some game. But still all these AI solvers were able to beat humans to it and are unbeatable in, uh, for most of the games. And another thing is the complexity. As uh, he just mentioned, it's not just brute force. You just don't want to perform the next move or play the next step. You want to see three, four steps ahead, and that's when you can make the next step. So that's the complexity that comes with these games. Along with that, it is important because solving these games, beating humans to it, also made a statement in advancements in computing. What are the advance advancements? Supercomputers. So calculating and searching through all these different number of states won't be possible in our laptops or any of these laptops. They require supercomputers which can process much higher uh, sets, of, uh, sets of states and at a much faster rate. So Deep Blue was a supercomputer, the one by IBM which beat uh, Gary. Then better algorithms. Advancement in his algorithms led to even uh, solve and beat humans at uh, games like Go whose state space is 10 to the power 360. And it's also a proof. It's, it also defines that AI is not just limited to basic processing. It can do much more than uh, very simple processing like tic-tac-toe or NIM. It can do a lot uh, better things and much more complex things than that. Now, how do they do it? How are these algorithms able to do it? So I'm not going to go into details and uh, integrities of the algorithms, but just an overall idea, they learn from experts. So most of these algorithms or these systems which are able to beat AI, they learn from experts. What do I mean by that? All these expert strategy and moves which was seen over the time since in the history of chess, in the history of Go, in the history of checkers were already fed into the computer, into that AI system. So AI system already knew those strategies beforehand it plays against so the system also plays against itself and it learns it better learns which move to take at what step so again here bringing back a small concept that we uh, just discussed a couple of minutes ago reinforcement learning 
So it learns that over the time when it plays, it understands in its system, in its database, it records in its memory that, okay, when I made this move, I won. So this is a reward for me. When I made this move, I lost. So this is a punishment or I made this set of moves. I lost. This is a punishment for me. It thinks ahead. So once it has played against itself multiple times, it now has a huge uh, number of games in its memory in which uh, it has played and won, played and lost. So now given all those things which, is, which it has in memory, it can think ahead. It can also rating the game. What do I mean by rating the game? At any step or at any particular state in a particular game, it can identify whether it's a completely lost, like, like the AI has lost the game or there are some chances if some, so, uh, some sets of moves are made. So it can rate the system. And again, the using, using their memory is just something that I discussed, that they can recall that in this situation, last time if I made X move, I lost. And in the same situation, last time if I made Y move, I won. So these are some of the things with which these systems are able to solve and beat humans to the AI to, to these games, which has huge and humongous uh, state space. Now, there are some other puzzles which uh, are conquered by AI. One is uh, Rubik's Cube. Now, Rubik's Cube, everyone's familiar with Rubik's Cube, right? So it's a 3D puzzle, three cross, three cross, three. Simple, uh, 54 stickers, six colors, and each, uh, uh, each face has nine stickers, each. Now, for Rubik's Cube, the state space is 43 quintillion possibilities. That is huge. It is humongous. Again, for Sudoku, so if we are considering a 9 cross 9 Sudoku, the states, the possible state spaces is 6.67 into 10 to the power 21. Again, for crosswords, we have uh, variable number. It varies based on uh, the input of crosswords. And then we also have 15 puzzle. Uh, everyone has an idea about 15 puzzle? So 15 puzzle is nothing but you have tiles, numbered tiles, and you have a four cross four grid in which you have these tiles placed. All you need to do is by moving around, there will be a blank tile and 15 numbered tiles. You move around the blank tile and sort sort all those numbered tile in sequence. That is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and the blank tile. So 15 puzzle has uh, a, stage, a state space of over a trillion possibility. So all these are huge state spaces, but AI has already solved these uh, spaces. Now, just to quickly uh, get a understanding, see if uh, these two links work. So these two links have AI solver already in it. All you need to do is you just need to go on these. There is an option of scramble and option to solve. And all you'll see is that whatever scrambling it does, it's able to solve it within a second or uh, less than a minute, most of it. The links are working. Just let me know if the link is not working. I can display it here as well. What is that mean? No, just to try out the solvers which are there. Oh, yeah. Working, right? Okay. So what you see is you hit the button scramble, you hit the button solve, and you'll find that we just uh, we just identified, right? Ubix cube has uh, forty three quintillion uh, state space. 15 puzzle had over a trillion, uh, even eight puzzle has a huge state space. And with all these humongous state space, 
the AI is still able to solve it. Everyone write both the lines. Okay. Uh, given the time we have, I'm gonna move forward. So now we saw all these different games, all these different things that AI can do. So do we finally consider that AI can solve everything? AI can do it all. Can it solve all these different games? No. The answer is no. AI cannot. The current AI cannot. Why? There are too many possibilities. So we just saw 3 cross 3 cross 3 Rubik's Cube, but there is uh, 4 cross 4 cross 4 Rubik's Cube, which is called Rubik's Revenge. There is 5 cross 5 cross 5 Rubik's Cube, which is Professor's Cube. And AI, it's, it's a humongous state space for any AI solver to solve or any AI solver to uh, try solving it uh, within a given certain amount of time. Why? Because it outnumbers the resources that are present. It outnumbers the current resources that we have for this AI system to run. Even any of these supercomputers will not be able to solve a Rubik's Revenge, Professor's Cube, or let's just consider 2 cross 2 cross 2 cross 2, a four-dimensional uh, cube puzzle. What is the other uh, thing that AI lacks? Creative thinking. So let's say if there is some puzzle that has some hidden meaning or it has uh, some sarcastic meaning or it's some joke to understand or it's something. Even chat GPT can do it at some extent, but it cannot do it 100%. So we are still not there where AI can do creative thinking by its own and understand those things. Identifying dead states. What do I mean by dead states? I'm just going to give an example and hopefully that makes sense. Okay. So everyone uh, went through this website, I guess, right? So you scramble, you were able to solve. It works, right? Okay. So now, uh, given this particular solution, does it look difficult for us to solve? It looks pretty easy, right? It's just once. Yeah, sorry, go ahead. Oh, how do you play? Okay. Hold on. So if you, so you just randomize some random state. You, I'm going to say search. It's going to, now we do replace solution. So now it's going to show how it works. So you see how eight puzzle is played. It's just moving that uh, tiles around the blank tile and you reach the final space. So this is, if you guys remember, I mentioned decision tree. This is how it learns its uh, own decision tree. So now everyone got it, how it's played? Okay, perfect. Now let's come on to this. So we, how does this look? Can anyone say this looks easy, right? It's just seven and eight are uh, swapped. So it should be able to solve it immediately, right? Anybody can think of a solution, give it a try. Yeah, go ahead. 
yeah means just can you think because it's it seems pretty easy right to solve mm -hmm. okay it's not extremely difficult it's doable right we agree and given an ai solver which can solve like rubik's cube 43 quintillion means what is this this is maybe some millions or billions of it right so it's much less than that so let's see I need to press stop. No, it means it automatically stops. We saw it in the previous one, right? It automatically stops when the search is done, when it has a solution. Yeah. Well, I, I am not exactly. No, this one is something I give gave it input. So, okay. I'm not sure how long this is going to go, but it's not going to solve it. Hmm? Yeah, it's not going to solve it. Why? No. It, in any possibilities, let it, let it search for a day. It's not going to solve it. Or even for a month. Why? Because it's a dead state. What do I mean by dead state? It is a state in any puzzle, in any game which you cannot reach or it's unsolved. So that is one such state in 8%. That was one such example. Now the point is, AI can solve any of the states, but it is not able to identify that simple dead state, which is there. Immediately it's a dead state, it should give unsolvable or something. So yeah, AI cannot do it all. Now what is the future of AI in gaming? Any one of you heard about uh, NVIDIA's AI-enabled NPC plugin. So that is one of the things that's coming in AI. Personalized gaming, everything NPCs to the gaming difficulty to level difficulties will be personalized to uh, the users. Advanced NPCs, simple example was that there is another article, AI-driven NPCs are living lives and planning parties on their own. Dynamic game design, the every level will be different for different users based on how they play, it will be personalized that way. Realistic virtual reality with, uh, I'm guessing everyone heard about, if not saw Apple IO, heard about the Apple glasses. So with that sort of virtual reality advancements, we soon will be able to play much more advanced games in which uh, will be will have virtual interactions with the objects. Now we saw these futures, we saw all these applications, we saw its importance. Is all, are all these advancements in AI limited to just gaming? Or all these gaming, the advancements which is done in gaming field, is it limited to uh, gaming? What other thing can you think of? Mm -hmm. Perfect, that's a great example. Anyone else? Any other thing means we discuss so many algorithms, right? It can. Sorry, uh, body tracking after that. Yes, for sure. For sure. Some of the applications that I had is city planning. So we can. Sorry, please go ahead. Anyone have any? Why? Okay. So efficient city planning is there. Uh, Self-driving cars is there. Uh, robotic skills are there. Education is there. How education, it can better personalize to how you learn. And uh, at, every, uh, at, at every other level, it will define the education resources based on how you have played the previous level or the set of previous levels. Robotics, robotic skills is gamified, gamifying the robotic environment and trying to make it perform certain works. Self-driving cars, we have one person who works in that field here, so he can maybe explain it better, but uh, 
environment like making it an ai gaming environment to teach uh, these autonomous driving cars to how to drive better and efficient city plan and so on so means this is pretty much it we saw history evolution then we played couple of puzzles uh more puzzles which were conquered how they did it why is it important and what is the future and application but still ai cannot do it it's not impossible it's not that we need much more powerful resources we already have huge powerful resources we just need better algorithms maybe someday it's able to do it all thank you well uh thank you for attending the lecture i have got one for all of you so once again for the winners and so so one of one of my friend was there so yeah he was doing something for me Right. Uh, yeah, I I think I passed it on. Right. Oh. Thank you, Jimmy. Thank you for being here. Thank you. All righty, guys. Uh, sorry, we went seven minutes over time, but uh, thank you. I hope you guys enjoyed the session. Any questions before we finally uh, finish it, end it? No, no. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you.